everybody. This is Joy Halstead, and welcome to Soapbox. I'm really excited tonight because we have a very special guest, and we're going to be talking about a very special event that's going to be coming up here in the next week. Um, but first, I need to get um, our shout-outs to our underwriters. Uh, that would be Pieces Pizza. Um, they include low-fat, vegan, and gluten-free options, as well as a fine selection of beer, wine, soft drinks. We thank them for keeping us fueled by supplying us with pizza for the crew. They're located at 1309 21st Street in Sacramento, and I recommend them highly. Um, also, uh, Humor Times. It's the world's funniest news source. The monthly political humor magazine is available worldwide by subscription in print or digital format. Don't cry about the news, laugh about it with the Humor Times. Cartoons, funny fake news, videos, and more info can be found at Humor Times, which also happens to be uh, uh, run by our uh, guest here, James Israel, who was the editor. And we're here tonight because he's got a big anniversary coming up for Humor Times, the 25th anniversary. So yeah. we're happy to have you here and, you know, just fill us in on the background and the history and all the fun that comes with Humor Times. Well, thanks a lot for, for having me. Uh, yeah, it's the 25th anniversary and uh, it's really amazing. I, sometimes I have to pinch myself, and, you know, to realize I've been doing it this long. Um, but yeah, just put out the 25th anniversary issue and um, uh, I think we have a slide for that later. But um, we're doing this event with uh, Will Durst, is the star of the show. Uh, he's a great comedian. Um, New York Times, in fact, called him um, possibly the best political satirist in the country. I think you should take the word possible out because uh, you know I've seen a lot of uh, political comedians and he, he really is the best. He's been doing it his whole life. Uh, that's our anniversary celebration there. Uh, that's coming up just a couple days at uh, Laughs Unlimited. You can get advanced tickets at humortimes.com. Actually, that'll give you the link to it. And um, then prior to Will coming on, uh, we're going to do a little slideshow of the best, uh, kind of a best of cartoons through the last 25 years. So that's a, that's a lot of material to go through. Um, the, the publication has come out once a month um, since April 91. and. Uh, we, we have some slides to show you of some of the uh, covers, and uh, that's the very first cover right there. Wow. Uh, the very first issue, <laughs> April 91. That's and great. Uh, that cartoon <laughs> is a good example of how uh, the best cartoonists really, uh, a lot of times what they'll do is conflate two issues and kind of make a point about both of them. So this was right after the Rodney King beating. And it started the riots in LA. And so a cop is saying, we made a terrible mistake. Uh, we need to take a page from Desert Storm, which was the first Gulf War that the first President Bush started. Right. And it was just ending about this time. And they didn't want to show any pictures from the, from the war because they learned the lesson from Vietnam, right? Right. So okay. they didn't want to show any of those uh, uh, images of um, you know, people being shot and so on. So anyway, so that, that uh, cover was a good example of uh, that type of cartoon. Um, but I'm always um, just enamored of uh, the talent of these editorial cartoonists because they make such a great point about the issue or issues they're talking about and they do it in a funny way and they make a commentary on the issue all at the same time. That's an art and in itself. It is, it is, a, it's an art and uh, you know the earliest cartoons. So, so this was in the uh, in that same issue, um, and we did a four-page uh, history, brief history of the Persian Gulf War because it had just ended, uh, basically. And so, this was the first page of that four-page spread. And um, that first image there was actually not a cartoon, but uh, a little flyer that was going around, um, and it kind of makes a point with all the. Uh, oil companies uh, being involved and basically, you know, 
kind of sad. Things haven't changed much since yeah, then. Yeah. <laughs> but this was kind of this is that was kind of like a meme before the internet memes. Right. Only it was on flyers people were handing out. And then there's the the cartoons uh, started about uh, that we started, um, and there was like four pages of those. Um, so anyway, uh, so we have some slides of uh, different issues that we did through the years. Um, I don't have a lot of slides of the early ones. This and one yes, here and is. And it was formerly 2000. called Comic Press News right. prior to being Humor exactly. Times. Exactly, it was the Comic Press News originally, and then we changed it to Humor Times about. I think it was about 15 years in. 16 actually, uh, and a lot of people ask me why we did that. Um, I'll just say briefly that it was um, basically got a lot of feedback through the years that uh, the that people thought it was you know if, if they didn't pick it up and look at it they thought just from the name that it was just like the funnies in the in oh, the Sunday like funnies the paper yeah. yeah that it wasn't wasn't a news it didn't uh, even though it says the word news there. Uh, people thought that, and so uh, that was part of the reason that uh, we switched to Humor Times. And then also, the the timing of it was such that um, when we made the switch, we were uh, going to a subscription version of the publication because the economy was uh, taking a dive mm -hmm. about that time. This was even before the big crash, and. Um, the we had only local advertisers that were supporting this How free were version. How sold? Well, it was free at first okay. for the first 15 years, wow. and uh, we put out thousands of copies all around town, just like you know, uh, one of the weeklies like News and Review mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, but you got to have a lot of advertising to Absolutely. support that to pay for the yeah. <clears throat> the printing and the distribution. And so a lot of the advertisers dropped out when the economy hit the skids there, and uh, it was either fold or try to be a subscription publication. Mm -hmm. So that that was uh, so that all went together with the name change and um, so now it's available by subscription. We we do put out a few free copies here and there, but if you really want to see it, um, you should subscribe. Uh, you can go to humortimes.com and get info about that as well. Uh, but we have a lot less ads than we used to, but that means more material. Right. I'm so impressed it's really, by um, how much material you have in, in this it's little paper. I yeah, mean, it's amazing. We jam a lot in there. There's a lot of <laughs> a lot of talent in yeah, there too. Yeah. Where do you get your Where do you get all this from? Well, um, most of it's syndicated through uh, syndicates. Um, some of them, some of the artists we work with directly. Uh, and it's not all editorial cartoons. We do. There's different things in there. There's uh, one cartoon that I really like called uh, Tom the Dancing Bug, which is a full-page comic strip. Mm -hmm. um, that's political, but it's a different sort of uh, form than just your one-panel or two-panel uh, editorial cartoon. Uh, and then there's columns in there and uh, <clears throat> all kinds of things. So we're we're just lef leafing, leafing through here it's some like of the Horton covers through the history. <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's George Bush getting everything he wants from Congress. That's when uh, they had the Congress and, and Bush uh, in, in uh, control there. And then after a while, of course, uh, the Dems took uh, Congress back over. And I think we've got a cover that uh, talks about that later on. So this was right after the uh, second Gulf War. And you know, you remember when uh, the Saddam statue got taken uh -huh. down, but also uh, a lot of commercial interests were able to Moved get in, in there. Uh, yeah. Like they made it, they put up a McDonald's, and so that's the point that uh, that that one's it's making. It's got a lot of historical value too. Oh, definitely, yeah. definitely. Uh, this was the Mad Cow thing was happening. Uh, <laughs> this is the July 2003 issue. It looks like I can't see it from here, but uh, so uh, Mad Cow was in the dog food, and so you got a dog there going moo. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a lot of good stuff there. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm going to do a slideshow and um, kind of, I'm going to um, be narrating over them and, and kind of filling in some of the history of, the, of what was happening mm -hmm. at the time to give people context because some of the cartoons, if you don't remember what was happening, right. you might not get it. But it's also, so this slideshow is going to be kind of like a, a short history of the United States over the, over the last 25 years, mm -hmm. really, and world events in cartoon form, uh, and uh, show the, some of the best cartoons. Besides the covers, we'll also have just some of the cartoons that were inside. Well, I think that's really a cool way to present it, you yeah. know, and really get a good feeling about the history of the paper. 
right. you know, and uh, what to, was going on at the time and exactly. tying it and together. The, yeah, the last quarter century and of the United keeping States. Keeping people, and, you know, laughing instead of crying yeah, about exactly. what's going on. Um, but I've had a lot of fun putting this, the slideshow together. It's been a lot of work. Um, the first, like, 10 years was all laid out without any digital, it wasn't digital back then. Uh, so everything was laid out by hand on a light table, you know, cutting out the cartoons and waxing them and putting it on the, old the light. Old school. Yeah, old school. <laughs> and so all those original issues, I had to go back and scan cartoons by hand. I didn't have any digital representation wow. of them. So it was a lot of, lot of work going through all these Labor back intensive. issues. Yeah. But it's been a lot of fun doing it too. It's brought back a lot of memories and, um, and uh, I'm, I'm going to have fun uh, presenting that slideshow. So that's going to be how we open the show on uh, Wednesday, 7 o'clock at uh, Laughs Unlimited this Wednesday. Get your tickets. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and then Will Durst is going to come on after that. And uh, Will Durst, uh, if the readers or the listeners don't, viewers <laughs> don't <yeah>. know uh, <laughs> Will Durst, he's uh, really a great political comedian and that's his main thing is political comedy and you know he's always got a lot of material to work with but right now I mean come on this is this is like got to be the best time oh for my a, goodness <laughs> I know it's like bizarro world right exactly. now I mean it's it's bad maybe it's bad crazy. for the country but it's great for the uh, political and that's what cartoons. I hear all the comedians saying yeah, it couldn't exactly. be right for right now that oh, yeah. this has never happened so I think this may be one of his best shows just because uh you know he's got a lot of really funny stuff to talk about and I hope it you know hope it stays funny and that none of these really crazies get into office and so we can look back and laugh at it but um, should be interesting yeah I think we're in for a real roller coaster yeah. ride in the next few months yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be real interesting but uh, I'm sure we'll have a great spin on all of it um, I'll just say a little more about Will Durst maybe we could show uh, there's some images we have of Will. Um, he's a five-time Emmy nominee, uh, was a host, co-producer of, of the PBS series Livelihood, a uh, regular commentator on NPR, CNN, C-SPAN. He's appeared on television over 800 times, including Late Night with David Letterman. He's been on Comedy Central, HBO, Showtime. Uh, received seven consecutive nominations for the American Comedy Awards Stand-Up Comedian of the Year. Apparently he never won any of them. In my case, in my opinion, he should have won at least a few of those. Um, he uh, premiered his one-man show, The All-American Sport of Bipartisan Bashing, at the <laughs> New World Stages Off-Broadway in New York City in 2007 to rave reviews from the New York Times and The Post. Um, in 2012, he premiered his one-man show focused on the presidential election, which was called Elect to Laugh. That ran for 41 weeks at the San Francisco Marsh Theater. He's from San Francisco. Um, in 2013, he wrote a show based on being an aging baby boomer, boomer called Boomer Raging, from <laughs> LSD to OMG. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the Humor Times actually presented uh, that show in Sacramento uh, about two or three years ago at the <laughs> Sierra 2. So that's the last time we presented him in, in uh, Sacramento. Uh, but we, we have had him at other events. In fact, um, we had him five years ago at the stage here at Access uh, TV. Um, there's a stage um, in the auditorium, and we had a, a big show. And uh, that was a, uh, we celebrated our anniversary as well as Access TV. Um, and it was our 20th and Access's 25th at the time. So we did a combined event. It was a lot of fun. Uh, we had uh, several entertainers on before Will Durst. But we're going to show you a couple clips here when they get it going um, of um, some of the event and, uh, and his performance there. Um, <clears throat> And uh, we've had them at other times as well. And, uh, it's, like, uh, it's, it's, it's good to be here. I love Sacramento. I could live here in a minute if it weren't for a little thing you call August. <laughs> which now stretches from June till October. 
Uh, I live in, I don't live far away. We all know Sacramento is two hours from anything. And that includes me. I live in San Francisco, which is a lovely little burg, but it's not the real world. You know that. It's 49 square miles. It's, it's like a 49 square mile circus without a tent. But there are pockets of Sacramento that are so idyllic. I mean, this place, there, you know, Norman Rockwell would come here and go, no. <laughs> no, not buying it. I'm sorry. So that's, that's one clip. We'll have a couple uh, others from that show. But uh, <clears throat> he's a lot of fun. Um, he, uh, some of the other accomplishments, this guy has been doing so much in his career. Um, he had three shows on PBS. Uh, a couple of them he hosted and created called, uh, one was called The Durst Amendment. Another one was called Citizen Durst. Um, <clears throat> let's see. He had a pilot called A Year's Worth with Will Durst. It was nominated for a Cable Ace Award uh, after airing on the A&E Network. Uh, but uh, was never picked up. Uh, he writes a weekly syndicated political humor column, which has been in the Humor Times almost since the beginning, as well as uh, other publications all around uh, nationally, um, including, um, I think, the uh, New York Post, uh, a lot of publications. He had uh, a show called The Will and Willie Show, where he interviewed... Uh, Mayor Willie Brown oh my goodness. on the radio, <laughs> and that ran on KQKE for a long time. I think it's they still That's do a podcasts of it. Blast from the past. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and uh, and then he's also one of three stand-up comedians featured in a movie that just came out in 2014 called Three Still Standing, and uh, there are three comedians uh, besides Will and two others that uh, have uh, been performing in, Sa in uh, San Francisco all these years, and it goes back and shows uh, a lot of their old ones. And um, uh, I guess we got another clip we can show you here from the, from the show, not from the movie, but from the show that he ran, uh, that he was at. And of, co of course, we have a new governor. Uh, Jerry Brown was governor when he was 36. He's now 72, so apparently we're gonna have to go through this every 36 years. <laughs> He'll be 108, just a head in a jar in the year 2046, running again on the platform of experience. I'm just glad that the election is over because it lasted for so long. I mean, Meg spent so much money, and all the ads look exactly alike. I was in Chicago. I was working at a club in Chicago for the two weeks, the week before their mayoral election and the week of their mayoral election. It was uh, late uh, February, and it was great. Uh, I got to vote, because it's Chicago, you know. Uh, six times, I spread it around, you know, didn't want to favor anybody. And they had the same ads that we suffered through all last year. It's, it's, like, it's like it's a cookie that everybody passes around. There's a template. What you do is you find a black and white still of the opponent that you want to denigrate, and it's best to catch them in either a compromising position or, or maybe caught in the middle of a sneeze or like that or, or stumbling downstairs. And then you get this guy with this incredibly deep voice. Uh, it's known as the doomsday voice from NFL films, John Facenda, like that. They came to Lambeau Field. And, and you get that guy, Jerry Brown. Loser, failure, shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. <laughs> and of course, he has to respond in kind, Meg Whitman. Greedy, harpy, ho. Actually, no, he didn't call her a ho. His wife did. <laughs> no. Um, but, you know, it came right after the housekeeper thing, so she was in said, he caught me <laughs> We could have done a better job with the banner there at that event. <laughs> you see it, a little curly in, falling We're having a there. little too much fun, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
Uh, but that was a lot of fun, and, and uh, this show Wednesday at Laughs Unlimited is going to be great, too. Uh, I just can't wait to see Will again. He's, he's a really good guy. Um, we hang out. Um, you know, if, you're, if you go to the show, uh, hang out a little bit afterwards. He, he always likes to hang out with people, and um, very personable, uh, friendly guy. But it'd be Smart interesting guy. to see what his take is on our, as our current situation yeah. in politics. Oh, yeah. I'm mean. sure he's going to have a lot to say about the uh, the presidential run on, on both sides, I'm sure. But um, it's going to be very entertaining for sure. So back to Humor Times. Um, yeah. I'm interested in some of the artists and the comics that are involved in it. Yeah. Um, you know, we've, we've changed through the years. We've used different cartoonists. A lot of that has to do with uh, who's available sometimes, like when we started out being a local Sacramento free distri distributed paper, um, there's rules you have to follow, like um, if other publications already have a cartoonist, they, you know, for that area, mm -hmm. you can't use them. Um, now that we're a national, you know, subscription publication, and we do have subscribers all over the country, um, they allow you to, you know, we're allowed to run pretty much anyone we want. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're able to pick up some cartoonists that we didn't have before. Um, Who are your other favorites? Um, Tolls, I'll, I'll point it out when we get to him. There's probably going to be some. Oh, here's one on uh, California when they wanted to split it into six different um, uh, kind of states. Yeah. You know, there yeah. was that whole controversy. So this is making fun of that. You got, yeah, that you got go weed. very far to <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Thank goodness. Yeah, weed on top. You got Merlot, dried up where it's uh, where it's very dry. <laughs> where we uh, are. <laughs> yeah. Bling down there. Where, um, and then it's not always about politics. This one's about uh, sports, um, the, uh, the the scandals and the uh, concussion issues, and so you know they're making fun of that. And that's that's the new version of uh, NFL. There, play play on the desk. There's another California-related cover about the drought. Jack and Jill went up the hill, and all the Californians followed. Uh, that's about uh, the school, you know, the, how expensive uh, college is. Mm -hmm. uh, here's the, uh, this is getting more recent now. This is uh, at the beginning of the race where uh, Bush and, uh, Hillary looked like the, you know, oh the most li likely very, nominees. Very, very flattering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, the dynasty, uh, you got the Bush dynasty, the, right. the Clinton dynasty. So, um, so we could show this, uh, more, yeah. another clip from the show uh, that, that uh, we had here a few years ago. I believe that's coming up. And in that... Isn't that just like America? Yes, yes, we're a, we're a mature, we're an educated country. We can elect an African-American president. But first, I don't know, why don't we try out a hat black guy? <laughs> yeah, you know, like a starter Negro. <laughs> a hybrid. Baby steps. And then, and then we work our way up to Ving Rhames. <laughs> we're just Afro-curious. He wins a Nobel Peace Prize. A Nobel Peace Prize for a guy who's now running three wars. <laughs> but the outcry from the right, oh, he doesn't deserve the prize. It was like he was caught naked under a goat at a junkie hookers for Satan convention. People, it's a peace prize. Well, he didn't deserve it. Bush never got anything. Bush got a shoe. <laughs> Two shoes, deserve them both, too. I'll give them that, here. George W. and his, uh, they just broke ground at the Southern Methodist University, picked, because it's easy to spell, SMU. Uh, yeah. yeah, so, a little, uh, little preview there. Uh, I'm sure he'll have more recent uh, candidates to talk about um, on the on the national stage. There, uh, it's going to be a blast. Can't wait. Um, really looking forward to it. And um, oh, you can get tickets to the event right there at uh, humortimes.com. 
Uh, if you go there, there's a little banner right at the top of the web page on the right that you click on that and uh, it'll get you to it. And you can buy tickets uh, at the door. And you can buy them at the door yeah. as well. Uh, you can also get them, uh, if you don't like to do the online thing, uh, right there at Laughs Unlimited in Old Town Sac. Um, and it's 20 in advance, so save a few bucks. Um, so hope to see you there. It's going to be a lot of fun and um, looking forward to it. Just two days and from now. And then i got to keep a lookout for you also hosting Soapbox as well. So yeah. we'll be seeing you here. That's right. I've been in your chair uh, a couple times and now. And we're very happy to have you here. Yeah, it's been, it's been great. Um, yeah, it's like a new career, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. <laughs> Always a non-paid career, but <laughs> yeah. Well, know. sometimes the humor times is uh, seems unpaid too. It's yeah, not, it's not exactly a making me rich, but uh, it's been a labor of love for 25 years, and um, hope to, you know, if I can't do it another 25, pass it, pass the torch on to someone who will. Uh, it's become basically an institution in uh, Sacramento now, and um, you know, I, I have the the readers to thank for that, uh, all the support through the well, years. You're not going anywhere any, yeah. anytime soon. There's so. some more covers there. Uh, that was uh, These are getting more recent now. This was uh, when the debate just started and uh, everyone was kind of uh, attacking Trump on, on stage there. So, <laughs> so this is how the cartoonist represented it. He's on the top of the uh, state building there as King Kong. Uh, I really love that cartoon in particular. It's very funny. Um, do we have any more of those uh, more recent ones to show? I, I was hoping for one uh, to come up with tolls so I could show you uh, what, he, what his cartoons look like. We're fading out here. Okay. So I just right. want to give a shout out to my 99 Rise family in Washington, D.C. Keep up the sit ins the rest of the week. Stay yeah. strong. Yeah, that's happening now. It's yeah. wonderful. It's great. Democracy in action. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm glad I could do it. I didn't sleep at all last night. I'm like, I'm going to be a mess today. How am I going to do this? Any sense?